You don't speak too much el español. Yo hablo español, pero es que me cuesta una vez. Pero, pero pues, pues, pues parcero, si usted habla muy colombiano. Oh, everybody says that, bro. I'm Costa Rican. Oh, oh you're Costa Rican? What the fuck? I was actually in Costa Rica. Yeah, where? I went to uh, San, San, San Juan. Y estamos hablando mucha mierda, yo. San Juan, San Jose. Yeah, San Jose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go. Everybody always says uh, I sound uh, Colombian. For sure, you sound a lot of Colombian friends, and two, I was just touring with a Colombian artist. So. Mm. Oh, that would make total that sense. Makes, that makes you, definitely picked up the, you definitely picked up the accent. I was in Mexico. For okay, like vamos a darle. Vamos a darle. Ready? Damas y caballeros. Niños y niñas. Y primero empezamos a cantar el tema fuerte del mundo. Pero lo que tú dices. ¡Podcast! ¡Aplauso! ¡Aplauso, coño! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out, yo. We got a, we got a crowd. Yeah, we need applause. Come on. The first time we out here, we are like 1,700 niggas, bro. That's a fact. 1,700 <laughs> Niggas, no bitches. And for the, <laughs> and for yeah, the first yeah. time in this podcast, we got yeah. security. security in the building. Hey. You don't see security right now, but give me a second. Give me a second. The creeping films. Yo soy Jorge Alaire. Aquí tenemos una persona, un señor de Costa Rica, un señor, yeah. un señor, yeah. un muchacho que es DJ. Yep. Yes, DJ, También productor, fue manager. Fue el tipo hace esto. Todólogo, todólogo. Every tólogo. Yes, the, every, every, every tólogo, tólogo, every tólogo. <laughs> We got here. Well, no, 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 no. We have here Jonathan Armar. No, Arward. 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 A R W A R, right? Arward. We are starting with the government. Yeah, right, with the government. The government. Let's start with the government first. Church, y'all, 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 I didn't even know this nigga had a name. I didn't even know this nigga had a government name. They doing that to me right now. Fuck it. Yo, talk to me, Jay. How you, how you doing? How you been? Pretty good. Working hard. Uh, super excited for this year, man. It's already started pretty strong. And uh, shit, excited to see what's going to happen. Okay, my brother. So you you were in the podcast like six days ago. The podcast came out. We saw it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We saw it. But this is a little different. Okay. Here we are a little different. We start from the start, from the beginning, when you were like five. We start from back there, Uh-oh. and then we tell everybody your story, and then we go into what you do. And then we get drunk. Yeah, that is in between. <laughs> that is just in between. That just sprinkled in there. That's just part of the journey. You know That's what just I mean? part of the journey. Facts. Yeah, no, I'm Facts. So, I'm going to come here. Were you born in the U.S.? Yes, I was. Okay. So, you fir- you second generation, first generation? Uh, first generation. First generation? Okay. You've been to Costa Rica, right? Mm-hmm. Did you live in Costa Rica? No, but my sister did. My your sister, mother, did. my sister. Okay. So he's from here. He's from. <laughs> okay, okay. Un, un gringo, 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 fin, gringo, fin. Siempre me dice eso. Gringo. El gringo, for sure. No questions asked. When, <laughs> when you went to Costa Rica, you know, in, in our country. <laughs> in a country. Yeah, right there. When, when you went to Costa Rica, you know, in a Hispanic country, we, we wild out when we little kids, you know what I'm saying? We wild because we go outside, we do a whole bunch of bullshit. Yeah. When you were out there, what was the craziest shit? That you did with your group of friends over there. In Costa Rica? Yeah, in Costa Rica. In Costa Rica, here, wherever. All right, well, Costa Rica, I haven't done much, so I don't really have much stories for you. Over there, it was just family trips, seeing, you know, uncles and all the, the, uh, La Pura Vida is very, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very chill. It's very yeah. chill? Yeah. Bro, no offense, the, no offense, no offense, no offense. Way too chill for me. Oh, Way too chill for me. It's a vibe. It's beautiful, but it's yeah, there's a lot. Oh, take like, my daughter with it. There's, there's there's a lot of things to do. Like uh, I went I went um uh, bungee jumping. Canopy. Yeah, jumping, zip lining, zip waterfalls lining. and shit. Yeah, that's the vibe. Very it's, it's, cool. it's a vibe. Shit, that's exactly what it is. That's oh exactly the goodness, vibe. bro. That's not meant for creepy. Now, creepy now, now, now the question is, is like, you know, as a as a child, right? As a teenager, right? We we do a lot of stupid shit, yeah. right? Now we I need that story. That you, that you remember, that first one that just came to mind, right? Of like, okay, right like, yo, we did this shit and it was by far the stupidest shit. We got to ask, be yada, yada, yada. So that we could start knowing, like, you know, who, who is Jersey John from where he grew up and so like, where he is today. What's dumbass, dumbass, dumbass shit that I've done in like the last as couple of years as a teen? I mean, when I first started DJing early on, it was, was pretty crazy because we used to do really, really big house parties. And I remember um, one of my friend's parents wasn't home. 
and they had a mansion. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> You're not just gonna come here and drop. Oh yeah, you know, it was a teenager. We just had a mansion to ourselves because no, 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 our parents were in here. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't our <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, he had he had a mansion, so we just went and threw a party. But what ended up happening was the SWAT ended up showing up. Wait, wait, wait. What? So yeah, so we were so all my man showed up. We were, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yo, we were all partying. On? We were all partying on the top floor, and a SWAT pulled up. And surrounded the house. So we thought it was a good idea to just go downstairs because downstairs was the whole size of the mansion as well, like same size as the top floor. Okay. So we parted at the top until they brought dogs and guns and everything literally into the house. And I was like 16 at the time. And that I was like, yo, what the hell? Wait, wait, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. What were you doing? Just throw that, a party. No, 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 no. Tell me, tell me. You're not going to give me that bullshit. You're not going to give me that bullshit. Just, Look, just security's looking at you like, nah, fam. Just like, a party. You're not, there's no need for the SWAT. Like the all black helmet on type of guy? Nah, ain't no, ain't, those guys are not coming out for no party. There's no way. No bullshit. What, I don't got to lie about that. You been to the it, suburbs? No, no, no. But my question to you is why? We, <laughs> how crazy? <laughs> how crazy? Yeah, that's a fact. I've never been to the suburbs. That's a good fact. Um, but yeah. the thing is, like, what's the need for a swap for a teen party? Homie, I don't, I don't have an answer for you. For but for me, that's something like early on. I was like, especially when I started DJing, I was like, yo, what the hell? Because I didn't see any of the repercussions. I was just having fun DJing, having you know, meeting people. And when we did that, we had honestly like two thousand people in the spot, so there was a shit ton of people. Well, okay, that's, now, that's, now, 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 you, now you giving now you giving a little details <laughs> that start making sense, right? I mean, ain't so ain't, ain't no that. ain't no local police coming for no two thousand kids. <laughs> so it was, it was a big party, and then it just one thing led to another, and then we saw that, and I was like, uh oh. So I ain't never got in trouble. No, I mean, they, there's be, no fences. There's, there's no, no fences. Woods. There's just a bunch of woods. The bunch of a big yard and woods. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not running to the woods. I'd rather go with this. Yeah, yo, yo, the listen to me. My mom, my mom, about to pick me up. I just got invited to this party. Oh, I don't even know what the fuck going on. Me I don't know what's English. going on. English, me, bad. No bad, good. no good. No good. Facts. <laughs> 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 then the Hispanic sort coming. <laughs> Yo, John. So, talk to me. You know, you said you know, Jir started off good. You know, why do you say that? What's you know, what's what's happening right now? That's that's all good. So, right before the podcast, I actually just purchased a vehicle for my business. So, I dope, got a, nice, I got nice. A brand new truck for my business. Last year, I bought a van. Didn't work out for me. I was just really antsy to start the business, and I got some bullshit car. Spent ten k on it. Everything was broken, so it just it wasn't a good start. But it was those risks I had to take for my business. I uh, did that, ended up selling the vehicle, got my money, got a got a brand new car today, literally just finished that up. That's why I said I've been up early, early and getting that done. And that's a pretty good start. And on top of that, I already am booked from now until I would say the end of March already. So I have like maybe like one or two more days. And when you and when you say business, you, you're speaking about your booking as a DJ? Booking as a DJ. Booking as a DJ. Now, what does the uh, location wise, what does it look like being booked as Jersey John? So in the past, I've already DJed in 46 states because I've been about 10 national tours. I just came back from an international tour. Uh, so it's really any major city, whether it's a big college or just a major city with a big music market. So I've been doing that for a couple years and um, just trying to, you know, circle back in some of those cities. So we just locked in Boston. Uh, my buddy's locking in. He were trying to do Punta Cana with my friend's dad. Uh, oh, no, no, with, 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 the, with the people out there. So we're trying to go to Punta Cana. We're trying to go to Arizona. Uh, I just locked in uh, Texas, uh, Austin, and, and, and Houston. So I'm just traveling, honestly, having fun, making that work, finishing my last year of college, and then the truck was for private events. So I'm double and triple booking every every other day. Nice, Go. nice. Now, damn. Damn. Cl claro, el efectivo, tú supiste. Eh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so now, you know, you know what, what would be your recommendation for somebody who's uh, trying to, as a DJ, right, trying to establish themselves at a point where they can start making, you know, to, you know, these accomplishments of being in 46 states, you know, being booked up to like early March, right? Like, what would you be your recommendation for somebody who's starting off and trying to accomplish the same things? The biggest thing is, I would say, is get uncomfortable early because what happens is a lot of people are like scared to do certain things. I was scared to do like weddings, even though I was doing major festivals. I just didn't want to fuck up somebody's day. 
I was scared to do Latin gigs. Ended up touring with a Latin artist. So now I'm in front of 10,000 people doing Latin shows, only speaking in Spanish. So there were certain things that I was scared of. And I was like, you know what? Let me just try it. Let me step my foot in there. And it ended up being a bigger opportunity than I thought. So just try things that you are honestly scared of as a DJ. Try those new things. And then you'll find out things that work for you. And even if you don't find out what works for you, at least the things that you're not good at, you'll get better at. So that's how I'd see it. <laughs> Oye, ¿qué, ¿qué tiene el micrófono tuyo, bro? Dime tú, ¿quieres que I me ponga aquí? I think it's the cable, check the cable. Uh -oh. Yeah, definitely it's the cable. cable. Stop, no, es desenvuélvelo, porque yo creo que porque está doblado. Yeah, because you, you, I hear you and then I don't hear you. Because then you're going to... Yeah, then you Yo voy ahora, volví. So you say you were, um, <clears throat> you traveled with a Latin artist. You hear me? Um, who was the artist and, and what, you know, what Why was, not? what was so, yeah. What okay. was so good about that experience of, of traveling with this artist? I was working with Kevin Roldan. So oh, shit. Yeah, I just came back nice, nice, nice. Him, with him. Uh, it was cool. Uh, homie brought me around to a lot of shows. The shows were pretty big shows. I disfruté ahí un rato. Nosotros estamos en México por, I would say, like two months or so. Nice. So we literally went everywhere. Uh, I remember one of the shows was right by the beach, like on an infinity pool, right by like, you know, the water and shit. So it was a vibe. It was different, um, and everything else was just a, a vibe. Like, it was an experience that I had to kind of experience as a DJ, uh, you know, to make me better. And how, how did how did this connection, ha like, come about? Like How, how did, did it come about? Yeah, how did it come about? Um, I have a buddy of mine named uh, Tavo, Tavo World. He's from New Jersey, but he was in Colombia working with Kevin, I would say 10, 15, 20 years ago. So they were working years, years ago. And then uh, he ended up coming over here to New Jersey, and then he was like, yo, Kevin's coming back to New York, and he's trying to build a team. I ended up working with Kevin for a little bit. We did uh, La Boom. We did um, we did a couple of PhD. We did uh, this big boat party. We did a couple of shows out here together. And then he was like, yo, I want to go to Mexico. I want to do this world tour. I want to go to Australia. I want to go to Colombia. I want to go to all these other spots. So I was like, all right, let's 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 do it. I want to. Fuck it. How's, how's that tour life? It's exhausting. How's that tour life, right? Because I think sometimes, right, to the to the public, like, you know, being in all these different countries and all these different, like, venues, it's like, yeah. oh, shit, it looks mad dope. Travels a lot. Right? But I feel like there's, like, a lot of things that happen in these things that people are, like, kind of not aware of, right? So what would you say is, like, the biggest eye-opener of, like, being on a, on a world tour like that? Well, it depends on the team you're working with. Some artists, it's easier than working with others, right? Some people, like, want you to be there all the time. Some people are like, yo, go travel, go visit, whatever. I'll see you when we have the show. So it depends on the preparation. It depends on the artist. It depends on the budget. Sometimes, you know, if it comes from the agency or the label, you got some extra bread. Let's go out and party. Let's go this and that. Uh, with Kevin, he had a girlfriend. He didn't drink or party. He wanted to go from the venue to the hotel. So there wasn't much exploring. Straight to business, which... Changed my mentality a little bit about business, but um, definitely had a little bit more fun with other artists where we went to the club, we went to the strip club. We, you know, it's we circumstance. Them. Yeah, it's certain circumstances. Yeah. So it really depends on who you're working with, what you're doing, the purpose of what you're doing. Yeah. And um, I mean, it, it's definitely fun and it's worth it. I would recommend every single DJ, every single artist, anybody to be able to tour. If you could tour with somebody, do it. You get to see the world almost for free. At the end of the day, you're doing what you love. You're getting paid to do it. Why not do it? But uh, some of the downsides are the hours. You know, you got to wake up early. You got to go to sleep late as hell. Sometimes you don't get to eat when you want because there's business to do. Yeah. There's, there's a couple downsides. Like, I remember I went on a tour. Um, we were on a tour bus, and we had to go from state to state, and we only had, like, one hour, two hours, you know, window of breaks. And we have to stop, like, six times for gas. So those are the only times you could pee. Those are the only times you could eat. Like, you got to work on everybody's schedule. If not, we're late. You know, if everybody said, oh, tengo que hacer esto, I have to do this, I have to do that, you're never going to make it. That sounds like... When we did the trip to Las Vegas, mm. you drove. <coughs> so um, me and my frat brothers, we got together and um, we had we had a convention in Las Vegas and we drove from Jersey to Las Vegas. Uh, we did a two day trip. Non two day? Two days, nonstop. Two days, nonstop. And it literally was, yo, it just, oh, by the way, it's a van, <clears throat> a van of 12 had 16 guys. Yeah. Oh that's, yeah. <laughs> two days. Exactly. Yo, There's, there was oh no showering God. in between. It was two yeah, days. Yeah, you got to take a bird yeah. bath. Yeah, yeah that you know didn't smell bath? good. No, there, there was no bird bath. Oh, no. Yeah, it, yeah, it was. You it had was to have little wipes. You had the queen, yeah. It smelled like balls, chicote, yeah, grajo, it, everything. It was, it was rough. Everything. It was rough. Nasty, Yo, we, dog. Listen to me. We, we were done with like the first like four bottles before we left Jersey. Oh, so nah. we were all drunk. It, it, listen to me. It's one of those things that you do and you'll never do again. Don't do that shit yeah, again. Yeah, never, never do it again. Don't, Don't do that shit again. But we're in time. 
Es tiempo. Vamos a esto. Ya es tiempo. 14, alright, let's go. 14, here we go. Let's start with the 80s. I love how he starts all right. with the 80s. Yeah, for sure. Come on, why would we start with the... Come on, let's, let's start with the 80s. Alright, just so that you understand, right? You only, you can only have, you can only get three wrong. Three wrong. Once you get that third Once one you get wrong, the podcast third one, done. Podcast over. You got three lives for this podcast. You got three lives. Three lives, bro. We started from the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> That's always how it starts. Hey, yo, guys, you ready? <laughs> you know what? We'll, we'll, I think we'll be... Can we give him a lifeline? We'll give him four. The yeah. <laughs> we'll give you four lifelines. We'll give you four lifelines, right? And then you pick who's going to help you with this one. No no phone searching, by the way. No no okay. Googling, uh-huh. niggas. All right. So here we go. What soda had six times the caffeine of any other soda on the market? Mm. A, Coca-Cola. B, Jolt. C, Sprite. D, Pepsi. I don't even know what Jolt. Uh, uh, tama, 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 tama. You we, need to we, say we you can't make a group decision. No no no, 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 no. You you are making the decision. You decide. Oh, I'm gonna use a lifeline, and you pick who's gonna be a lifeline. Yeah, who's certain on this one? None of y'all are. None of y'all are. <laughs> None of y'all. Are. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo. All right. So here it is. What soda had six? Olima. What soda had six times the caffeine of any other soda on the market? So it's six times. A, Coca-Cola. B, Jolt. (coughs) C, Sprite. D, Pepsi. Yo, are you using a lifeline? Yes or no? That's all I got to know. Using a lifeline? I don't feel like I should. Okay, so then what's your answer? Well, I just don't know what Jolt is. (laughs) Well, I don't don't know what to tell you, bro. (laughs) Caffeine. The other two have some caffeine, but not six times more. Well, you need to listen to me in life. You got to make decisions, right? You got to make uncomfortable decisions. You're uncomfortable right this now, my This is your life. uncomfortable decision. What's Jolt, though? You going Who with knows, Jolt? Who knows, Who knows? Who knows? It might not even be a drink. <laughs> it might not even be a soda. I don't know. <clears throat> These are just the options you got. The question is, is Jolt your final answer? Yeah, they probably went out of business. So, yes? Yeah, Jolt. So, B, Jolt is your final answer? That's right. Correct! <laughs> I mean, Look to be him. honest, that was the That's only the op- only <laughs> that was the only option I would have been like Jolt, sense, nigga. Right? I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think I'm that stressed. one through. You knew that? <laughs> that no shit. <laughs> yeah, to me, obvious. Obvious. to me it was obvious. To me it was wow. obvious. To me it was obvious. Hey, you know what? Maybe we just maybe we just think different. They tricked think- you because they put Coca Cola in the front too, right? I was gonna say Coke. You see oh what I'm saying? God, they was gonna trick your ass. I was gonna say Coke. All right, all right. Yo, John. So you said um, you said you're going to school, right? Yeah. What are you school? going to school for? For marketing. Marketing. Yeah, mm-hmm. Rutgers University. Oh, Rutgers University. Yeah, fully Shut online up. though. Can't do in person. Can't do in person. Nope. Why I not? Have a hard schedule and uh, rather not just be caught in class. Rather just do my thing at home. Dope, 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 dope. Why marketing? Why marketing? Well, I had to pick something. That's <laughs> 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 person. I had to pick something. <laughs> no, it was because my family wanted me to go to school. I actually wanted to do pre med to begin with. Uh, I became an EMT, uh, volunteered at the hospital, did all of that. Really? Uh, just didn't align with some of my goals at that point because I was doing music, I was DJing, and then I was like, how am I going to DJ and then go do pre med? So I was like, you know what? Let me leave this behind. Hold on, hold on. Oh my no. God! Never again! Never again! My doing that. Campus. I've never heard a nice. Me gusta vaina del diablo, well, cámara well, del diablazo, maldita cámara del diablo. Okay, I needed to stress that out. You know what I'm saying? I needed to get that out of my body. We can hear you though. It's a good thing. Oh, you can hear me? Yeah, yep. I, can hear you I can hear you clearly. Yeah, I see. Um. So yeah. Uh. Where were we? Um. Marketing. We're talking, yeah. We're marketing, about, marketing. 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 Yeah, yeah. No, we're talking about joke first. Yeah. The fact that. Yeah, we got that right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got that right. <laughs> 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 Talk about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you said you're going to uh, you're going to Rutgers for marketing, yeah, right? Um, and you went into that, but you said you also did the EMT stuff. Yeah, did you see any crazy stuff during like their time with the EMT? Yeah, they made us uh, work in the ER. Well, it's because I didn't, I never rode with a, an ambulance. Okay, I only uh, did the practice and the certificate and everything. Uh, so two times they made us uh, work in the ER to in order to graduate, basically. Um, they were doing CPR with the machine. I forgot. I should know what it's called, but I forgot what it's called. They were doing CPR with the machine, and they were like, "Nope, pronounced dead." So like, it's crazy to just see somebody. You know, do they're doing CPR on somebody, and they're like, "Nope, he's dead. Like, doesn't have vitals, doesn't have anything." So like, I was what I would say eighteen at the time, just to see somebody die like right there, and they, and they're just like, "Oh, time of death. Grab his stuff, pack it up." Like, damn, bro. Like, that so, could be somebody's, you know, father, somebody's, you know. So the brother, detachment, whatever. the detachment that there is, right? Yeah. How impactful is that? Because to me, I've always struggled with, like, and I get it, right? Because 
to a regular person is like, yo, we don't see this, but these people see this every day. every every, day, every yeah, hour, every, every minute. Yeah, like you yeah, should yeah, get it. You are you see it all the time. So seeing that, like for the first time, like it's like I don't know, it it, it just sits it sits differently with you. Mm. So that happened, and then the other time, I think somebody was like schizophrenic or something, and they were just like acting out or having like a seizure. <sighs> Uh, in the ER, and I felt bad because I had to, like, h- try to help them, and I just really couldn't do nothing because w- I'm not certified. I don't have – I can't give medic- medication or anything. So it was uh, definitely an interesting experience in the ER, honestly. It's not for everybody. Nah. Nah, you could go through the whole med school and then just be like, yo, this is not for me. And that happens to a lot of people. Mm. Damn. Yeah, I'm not built for that shit. Fuck that. I, that. I wonder – Fuck that. I wonder if, if, if the ER would be, like, a place for me. Like, you know what yeah, it is? Right. Uh, hear me out, hear me that's out. That's crazy. Hear me out, hear me out. I have like this weird gene in my brain, right? That, here you go, here you go with the bullshit. Yeah, the with the bullshit, with the bullshit, with the cap, right? Cap. I have this weird it's gene in my cap, brain. It's all cap, nigga. Right? <laughs> I feel, hear me the out. Oh shit, it's cap. Hear Look me at out, me. though. Hear me cap. out, though. Hear yeah. me out, though. Hear me out, though. Right? I feel like the, these type of situations, like, fuel me to, like, want to, like, know how everything goes down so that I could be prepared for every single situation of whether it's giving a guy CPR that's dying, knowing how to handle a guy with schizophrenia or some guy who just came up and like their arm is gone. Like you see what I'm getting Like those things to me are like, oh, this is mad cool. Like as crazy as that sound in my brain, I'm like, oh, this is cool as fuck. I don't know why I think that, but I do. I'm you want to survive? Cap. What? I, I'm dead you serious. You want to survive from cap. everything? No, I just, I don't know. I've, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's like the this superhero nigga, thing in my brain. I don't know. This nigga work at that hat store. What's the hat store? Is it called? <laughs> in the he's the he's the fucking <laughs> the f- manager of that bitch. <laughs> Cap like a motherfucker. Right I'm, now. I, I'm serious. I think so. Capping like a motherfucker. First of all, uh, guys over there, am I in the shot? Because I didn't check that. I'm good. All my fatness is in that bitch. Facts. All right, cool. Just want I want to make know. sure. <laughs> I, I feel like that's something like I don't know, I find I find interesting the like I, the adrenal, ad, adrenaline rush of everything. I think I would. Definitely. I'm with you, nigga. Fuck that. If I yeah, see somebody, no. that, I'm out of here. I'm sorry, yo. No. I, I got take. What's it called? The little thing that they wear. What's it called? What? The, the little coat. The little uniform that they wear. No, no, no. Apron, nigga. They not cooking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that. that. <laughs> <laughs> nigga said, Abram. The, the scrubs. The scrubs. I would have taken my scrubs. scrubs off. And call it walked a day. Out of, walked up to the motherfuckers in my drawers. Nigga, fuck out of here. I'm done. I'm done. Over. Over. Yeah, it's definitely a lot. But I kind of like saw it a lot since I was a kid because my parents always worked at the hospital. My sister worked at the hospital. Mm. So it was like kind of like a family thing. So I Damn, nigga. I, nah, oh, I get wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. So I, I understand why niggas is like, you need to go to school. Oh, so everybody you, went to school. I, everybody wanted to do that, yeah. Damn, nigga. So wait, so tough. wait, about so you're so you're in a family of like people who like work in the medicine field, mm-hmm. and some sort of, and you're are you like the only one who's like off to I the left? I tried it, and then you were like, Fuck I went that. to the left. So the thing was, and I mentioned this in the past, is like in the medical field, like being able to help somebody, even if it's you know discharging them, like taking them to their family or taking them to their car, or they just need help with you know, oh, I need a juice box, whatever it is. It's like the feeling of being able to give somebody and know that you're helping them, and they really appreciate it more mm-hmm. than anything, especially mm-hmm. at the hospital, yeah. you really see that. Because they might not have, you know, family, friends coming to visit them. And you just helping them out, they appreciate it. So that's the same feeling I got with music. So that's kind of how I'm able to correlate it. Because it's like, I'm able to give people that experience and make people have, you know, those memories. And, and just, you know, really appreciate the night. So since I got that similar feeling in music, you I kind of yeah. switched it up and started doing this. Because I'm very good at networking. Uh, I enjoy music. I love traveling. And it kind of worked out for me without me having to do, you know, 20 hours of schoolwork every damn day. <laughs> Okay. Facts. I, cool. I, I got right. you with that. So now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna see if I can put some of these DJs on, right? Um, you're, you're studying marketing at uh at Rutgers. Yeah. Um, what would you say is the top three things DJs need to do when it comes to the branding of their of their name, the branding of their style? What is like the top three things that they are not doing that they should be doing? I feel like a lot of DJs kind of. Just focus on, I would say, I mean, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. You want to be a good DJ, but yeah, you're right. It comes down to branding and you kind of have to study it. You kind of have to look at other people, see what other people are doing, pick and pull ideas, implement certain strategies. That's really the biggest thing that you learn in school, at least, is, you know, certain marketing strategies, certain branding strategies. You want to pick and pull big strategies from major companies and be like, okay, how can I implement this? How can I change it up? You know, What's how tra- what strategies it? are these? I'm going to be honest with you, bro. No. I don't know. Uh, no. I don't. <coughs> school, was, school was cool, and you learn a lot of strategies, but they're not really necessities because it's like once you learn the strategies, you have to implement them and learn skill sets, right? Mm. So that's really the biggest thing. So I'm going for my bachelor's, and I'm about to be done with that. 
learned a couple of things that helped me with business, helped me with finance here and there. But more than anything, it's the skill sets that I applied after, kind of just listening to the lectures and then be like, oh, I can, I can make this work like this. Oh, that, that works? Okay, cool, let's do that. So mm. that's probably why I'm going to go for my master's degree and then I'm going to you know, hyper-focus in digital marketing. Digital marketing. Mm. Dope, yeah. dope, dope. Because there's a lot of brands, like there's a lot of things that go into marketing and when you sp- specifically speak about branding, I mean, that's each person. So it really depends on what you want to portray. Mm. Dope. Okay. Well, we're technically, technically mm. on time. Technically. Technically. But when I cut this shit, we're not going to be on time. Who gives a fuck? Here we go. Dale 90s. We might get this one. Uh, you, might get, you got lucky in the last one, nigga. Fuck out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen to me. If you could get this one. If you get this one, bro. I, I say pour the shots. Oh, that's fucked up. I say Damn. pour the shots. Again? I got no hope in him. No questions. Fuck. Actually. There's three answers? There's, no, there's one answer. <laughs> there's one answer. Four Wait, options. There's, there's four options. Four one options. answer. Yeah, I got a twenty-five percent. <clears throat> okay, here, Jeez. nigga, you got a ten percent. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> Which is not considered a grudge band? Oh my goodness. A grudge. A grunge, grunge band. Grunge. Grunge band. A. Pearl Ham. I'm on the Perla. B. Soundgarden. <laughs> C. Nirvana. D. Matchbox Twenty. You guys know this? Nigga, you a DJ. You supposed to listen to everything. Huh? Not everything. I know. I'm capping. Okay. I'm capping. I'm here. I'm just here to cap. I'm over here in this corner just cap cap master. What's your answer? I'll I'll say them one more one more time. A crunch. Grunge, G R U N G E. Rock. Band. Oh. A, Pearl Ham. B, Soundgarden. C, Nirvana. D, Matchbox yeah, 20. I'm going to be honest with you. I only heard of Nirvana. I don't know the other three. You do? If, hey, actually, the lifeline, bro, he he looking nah, stressed out. If you get it wrong, I'm going to make you take the damn shot. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if he gets it wrong, we could all curse him out, bro. It's fine. <laughs> We could, I could step outside too. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was Nirvana? C. C. All right, we're gonna go with C. Is C Nirvana your final answer? <laughs> Not really, but yeah. All right, here we go. Pour the shot. The shot. See, here we go. The answer was D. Matchbox Twenty. Oh my God, why the fuck I hate box? this shit, bro? Matchbox Twenty is the answer. I don't know who they are, but that's the answer. <laughs> he is not. He is not capping that time. It's okay, it's a little shot. Don't you bro can't. him. Don't bro him. You didn't know the shit. Give me. Yeah, what? Y'all are fucking Like, yo, bro, 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 bro. He's like, like bro, bro. He, 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 was, he, was, he was looking to the back. No, mostly once he went through. When he said Nirvana, I'm looking at him and I was like, that's rock. That's, that, that's, that's, rock. that's, that's the only one I that's knew. That's, that's, that's the only one I know, he too. That's the only one I knew. I thought it was a trick question. Yo, salud por tu education. Salud por tu trabajo. Salud por que you get... All the shit that you want to get in life, my boy. Thanks, my brother. Blessings, Joe. What the? F- oh, that was smooth. Fuck. That was good. You see how fuck tequila, them? bro. That ass. You see how they both had a reaction, and that was, was like good. water. That was good. Fuck tequila, bro. I just don't drink tequila, good. bro. That was good. I'm a, I'm a Hennessy nigga, bro. Yeah, I mean, I dabble. What's I, the what, What's the Wednesday spots around here? Wednesday He's spots. He's like, you, you got that niggas just turning on the car. Uh, Might as well just go finish, right? Wednesday, Wednesday <laughs> spots. Well, the closest what's Wednesday. The, what's the Wednesday spots? Closest yeah, Wednesday party Angel, around you. Angel, Fiesta. Angel, cool. Fiesta, Fiesta cool. Fiesta's. 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 Right now, it's probably going to be. We got a plan after this, guys. Yeah, Fiesta's. Gotta is go the best somewhere. Place. Studio, then Fiesta's. Yeah, cool. <laughs> cool. Um, man, we took it. Damn, bro. Okay, like, we're hearing the shots. You, this nigga said this was water, right? What'd you drink, bro? Um, tequila. Tequila, but cual? Which one? Which is the one that you're like, I'm going to the I, store? I'm going to be honest with you. Every now and then, I'll literally go to the store and just look at the tequila section and just get something new. Some random shit? Yeah, just to see if there's something else that I like. Okay, so don't know alcoholico. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, AKA, AKA, I'm a little alcoholic, alcoholic. but you okay, know. So, no. this is the question. This is the question. This is the question. This is the question. When was the last time you got drunk? And then we're not talking about that. No, yes we are. Look at me. Yes we are. Yes we are. (laughs) And then when was the first time you got drunk, and what happened both days? First time I got drunk. Mm. Oh yeah, I remember it. Of course you do. (laughs) Everybody does. First time I got drunk. I ain't. All right. So 
I learned my first drunk lesson when I got drunk the first time. You of course. We all I mean, that's, I think, that's, I think, I think we all, that's, that's how it works. I, I think how it goes, it goes down. It goes hand I think, in hand. I think that's how. <laughs> so I decided to, We were. it was like high school party and I was drinking, but we were sitting. Sorry. If sitting you're in high down. school. <laughs> If you're in high school, do not fucking drink, okay? No, no, no. We're no. not drink, telling you to do that. Especially telling your story. Especially not sitting down. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sitting down. No. Keep going, my brother. So, yeah, my issue was we were at a big table. It was me, a couple of my guys, and then a couple of girls with us from high school. Not a good mix. And the girls were hammering the drink. So I was like, oh, yeah, I oh, got yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, boo, boo, Yo, boo. these bitches have been drinking since they're like fucking 13 and 12. <laughs> I was like, I got this. It's so like it from the suburbs and shit. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm hammering a few shots with them, and I'm plastered. Like, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I stand up, and I'm like, oh, Wrong. Nah. Wrong thing to do. Right? Then a couple, like, literally two minutes afterwards, the cops come in oh. to the backyard. Bro. The p- cops come in. Yeah, he's going to say something You know what, bro? Yo, I'm Get not out of my studio. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> the invited. The cops have to pull up over here. <laughs> what the fuck, <laughs> nigga? <laughs> too much drinking. <laughs> yeah, damn. <laughs> Yo, that's funny. That's funny. Every that's time funny. this nigga had a party, cops pull up. I, I don't know. What's going on? Then we were in the back. The cops pulled up. And at this point, I'm hammered. Right? So I need to How old were you at this point? I was... Fifth? Yeah, I was freshman. 15. 15 so like 15, 15, 14, 14, 15. 14, 15? 15, 16, around there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Something like that. Um, I'm sitting down and the cops come in and I stand up and when I went to go stand up I was like oh I'm drunk so I sit back down the cops are already coming back in <laughs> and I'm like fuck me so then my friends were like yo come on so we put our arms around us acting like we weren't drunk to go inside and then they realized how hammered I was and then I had to just fucking sober up that time so that was the first time I was like 15 that's funny that's funny last time I got drunk it was uh, I'm already getting looks uh, I I wanted to try something. I wanted to test how much I could drink. Uh, oh, what? My God. Why would you do that? <laughs> so what happened was... Right? So what happened was... <laughs> Help this nigga, dog. I saw this shit on TikTok. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What are we doing? And I decided to mix TikTok, a TikTok, bu- this is your fault. <laughs> I decided to blame... I mean, I just blame... <laughs> I decided to mix a buzz ball and a, a beatbox. The hell is that? Oh nah. So the, it's the little box that's nasty as fuck, and the little ball that's, that's even nasty. nastier than the box. <laughs> okay, I swear to God, I'm just I, nasty. I, I guess my age is showing up here. I have no clue what the fuck y'all talking about. But keep on going. We're gonna put you on. Don't no. put him on. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. <laughs> so I took that, and then we decided to go out and drink afterwards. So that was the pregame, right? And it, it was like a, a big, big cup. We did that. You put both of them, just the whole thing. The whole thing of both. Oh, no, nah, yeah, you bugging. And then that was Man. a pregame, and then we went out to drink on a $2 Tuesday. Oh. And every drink was $2. So we hammered tequila, <sighs> vodka, whiskey, nigga rum. Said, nigga said tequila, vodka, whiskey, <laughs> boom. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of that sentence, the nigga was like, <laughs> like, bro, damn, nigga. So I might have uh, yacked really bad. How bad? Like three hours, I was asking to go to the hospital. Uh, t- for the people in the back who were there, how bad was it? Yeah, y'all scale- weren't there. I was going one to ten. Y'all Scal- weren't there that day. I don't think none of y'all were there that day. Nobody was well, there? I don't remember, but... <laughs> what, what? <laughs> I don't think y'all were there, but I don't remember. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how nah, bad nah, was nah, it? Y'all weren't there. It was a day that I was with, uh, with Timo. The only reason I remember Timo being there was because he was coaching me through it. <laughs> so that nigga's the alcoholic. <laughs> See, no, no, see no, Timo, damn out, damn out. you don't hang out with him anymore because no. you're going to make him be like you. And we don't want him to do that, okay? The fact that he said he was coaching me through it it's is wild. crazy. That is wild. Like, that's a different... Yeah, Coach he, he Timo. Another, he, had another, he had another DJ, and I was like, yo, bro, oh, I, need to go, I need to go to the hospital. He goes, no, bro. No, you don't, bro. You're like, we're thicos, bro. You don't have to do that. You're good. And I was like, That bro. is not a friend I want. If I'm asking for the hospital, yeah. take me to the fucking oh, hospital, Oh, yeah, yeah. Bro. Take me over there <laughs> ASAP. If I'm asking for the hospital, take me to the fucking hospital, ASAP, bro. ASAP. I don't Want to be, be like, oh no, nah, we Dominican, we do this. No, nigga, I'm dying. <laughs> Fuck is you talking about? We Dominican, nigga. Like I, I, <laughs> I'm a human. I, I My liver's a- telling me, nigga, get to the hospital, son. That was probably the closest I ever felt like getting my stomach pumped. Pumped is crazy. I never, I'm gonna be honest with you. Usually I drink, I get hammered, I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'll drink some water, I eat. No, this time nothing works. No. Nigga, try water, to drink water, water food, out. Food, food out. out. <laughs> Everything liquor in, out. liquor out. <laughs> You know when you go, like people try to go in the, into the 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 club and the security just keep throwing them out. That's what's <laughs> happening to his stomach. He's like, whoop, 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 whoop. like, goddamn, 
fuck. That was, that was not it. Yeah, you're not doing that ever again yeah, in your life, right? Let's, let's not do that. Let's yeah, not remember do that when I said I stopped drinking like that? Uh, that's part of it? That's why. No, no. If you're drinking like that, you definitely have to stop drinking like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. You know? Let's not do that. Yeah, I don't get drunk anymore. Yeah, I, thank you to the Lord. Yeah. No, Damn, they just said you was capping. Yep. Y'all see me drink like Yo, that? These are your friends? <laughs> <laughs> these niggas don't like you. <laughs> that, nigga, Yo. that nigga was like, <laughs> that nigga goes like, shut the fuck this up. This nigga's a liar. <laughs> this nigga's a liar. hard as fuck right now. Capping like a motherfucker. Like, I don't drink like that. All right, guys. So I'm sorry. I don't drink 10 gallons. I'm only drinking two. So I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you think you're still drinking? All right, DJ question. DJ question. Uh oh. As a DJ, yep. what is your, that you think is your best skill as a DJ? Uh, and why? Mm. I would say is m- more than anything is the entertainment aspect. I mean, duh, DJs entertain. But I feel like a lot of DJs will just you know, talk here and there on the mic or they'll play a song and they'll just let it rock because it's a good song. It's like I make sure that I play the song at a, a specific time, say something to it, do something, call people out, like really make it an experience. And I feel like a lot of DJs lack that because they want to just be a good DJ. They just want to have that skill set as a DJ spin and sound good. It's more than sounding good. You're entertainment at the end of the day. So when you go to like these resorts and you see like the, the dancers or whatever, the fire, or whatever, all that shit. They're entertainers. As mm. a DJ and a performer, you should be an entertainer. So I feel like my biggest thing is you come and see me live, it's completely different than just hearing a mix. Or it's completely different than just, you know, hearing me talk about DJing. It's like, oh, shit. You see the difference. Okay. So my criteria for DJs, it's, it's a little, What's the criteria? I, guess, I guess, old school. I'm, I'm explaining it right it now. Is. They got to know what they're doing. No, no, no. Because they got to know what they're doing. A lot of people know what they're doing. No. A lot of people know what they're doing mm. when it comes to putting music. Mm. Putting, you hear what you hear what I'm saying? Putting Basic. music. So you put one, you put the other one. That's it. Yeah. What I'm saying is, for me, yeah. my criteria is, I'm here dancing to this one song, boom, boom, hey, hey. And then out of nowhere, you transition me into the other song. And I didn't even notice. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Like the How the fuck did this just change it. like that? First of all, motherfucker, I was enjoying the other song, but this one feels exactly the same. So let's stay right here. Those are the DJs that I like, and yeah. the niggas that be scratching, but good scratching, not not, not like not, to, not overdoing well, it. It depends. It depends on where you're at, no. right? Because certain certain environments, and this is what I learned over the years. I have mm. maybe nine, ten years DJing now. It really depends on the vibe that you're trying to DJ. And I tell people when you're gonna DJ, don't just DJ your style. Like sometimes you have to change your style for the room, not just change the music. You could change. The Say music. that one more time because I didn't. I don't think I heard that one. Like you could change the music you play. Like yeah, you can play a couple of dembo songs and then go into reggaeton. Doesn't matter. But you also have to change the style because you go into different genres. There's different ways of DJing that genre, and I feel like that's lack of experience. Some people will just play the song like how you're saying. Mm. A lot of DJs are good at just transitioning and make it sound like the same song. That's cool. That's that's a vibe but that doesn't mean that that's gonna what's gonna cater the best to the room sometimes let me be honest with you i cut my set and i talk and everybody's looking at me and they're like oh shit he just said that oh and then i play a bang and they're like oh you know it's like very very different and it really depends on the room that i'm playing if i'm playing like a lounge laid back and people are dancing and you know doing their own thing cool then i could you know do those smooth transitions they don't even know i'm there but they're like oh shit vibing with everything if it's a concert style college style where i could get attention or i could do something ballsy or motherfuckers are whether throwing money or putting out shots or whatever I'm making that known. That's the experience. I think at a club, you get, you you got the liberty to be ballsy. Yeah. Because niggas is getting drunk. You can do the fuck you want. And I feel honest. like a lot of DJs are too timid sometimes. Too like much. I go, I, I go all niggas, out man. because at the end of the day, I'm getting paid to do what I like. I right? hate DJs, and bro. I'm here to retain customers I, and make money for the spot. Don't hate me, bro. But I hate DJs. I tell them all the time. I don't love them yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them all the time I because don't love them I'm, I'm telling. I tell them because of this. Like you said. Some niggas just be putting music and kill me if you want. I don't give a fuck. Um, and they want to charge a whole bunch of money. And I'm like, nigga, no. My brother could do that shit. He's not a DJ. He could do that shit. I mean, I can't. How do you feel about uh, people asking DJs to be promoters? How do I feel about... When you garbage? That- yes. Well, you got to do something. All right, so... <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> As a promoter, right? I think... Because I see it at a lot. I think there's certain... Well, here's what it is, right? And this is what sometimes some of these DJs are not comprehending, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have better skill sets at gathering people than what you actually, do as a DJ, actually do right? Anything. So if you are a guy, let's say that you're a decent guy who's charging $400 for an hour and a half set, right? Mm-hmm. 
But every time you pull up to my club, you pull up with a 20 piece, a 30 piece, right? As a promoter, I love it. You get I that for you get that for. But but at the same time, the the if the screen went off, it's fine. If the screen went off, it's fine. As, as long as the camera is right, it's good. Don't worry. About you got money. So as, we still record. I see the low yeah, light. So the the issue with it, not the issue, but the the ability with that is, is that when I see a, a DJ who could do that, but is only getting one booking a night, I'm thinking, my brother, stop being a DJ, turn into a promoter, because you could walk out now with a band. And you only have one spot, and you don't got to stress about your schedule. You see what I'm getting at? So there are DJs who have the skill set to be promoters, and those are the ones I'm like, yo, Banito, yo, stop doing that DJ shit, my nigga. Just come to the promoter side, my nigga. You're going to make more money. Because I see a lot of DJs that, especially the up-and-coming, they make those DJs, and I genuinely feel bad because I don't don't fall in that pit. Maybe in New York and Manhattan, they'll still try to play the promoter game, but I haven't seen it anywhere else. Well, I think, it ha- but I think it has promoter to- games in what sense though? Because I, 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 I like, think- oh, sell tickets in order to get a. Spot. Oh no no okay okay okay. Oh, no, no. So Bring see, people in order so, to get the booking. Okay, so no no so like the only time that I pull that off is for like the yacht party, for the yacht party strip. Because my thing once again, I think. But that's because of the overhead. It's way well, exactly because of the overhead. But on top of that is like, yo, you can make more money than what you're gonna get in the regular booking that you're gonna get, right? Some of these guys are only getting booked once a night, and they're charging two fifty three hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm giving you a deal that all you got to do is sell me ten tickets, and you already made. What you were gonna make in one booking, and all you gotta do now is party. You sure I'm getting it? Do I understand that you love the art of being a DJ? Yes, and I respect that. I think that. it's like the attention more, more so. Like people want to just be on the bill. They want to be on the flyer. They want to have their name. Correct. Out there. They, they want to DJ for an hour and then get plastered and know that they're making money from there, and then maybe a little bit from the tickets, whatever. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, and to me, that works, right? Like if yeah, but for how long? Huh? I mean, you're no, not gonna you do gotta do it for special occasions. Not only exactly. For, you're not for gonna do this for your rest. Of, you're not gonna do this your entire career, right? But do I think it's a very, very important building block for people who are coming up so they can understand the business, see how money moves? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, there are some DJs that if they really want to, they could put some of these promoters out of out of business. You know what I mean? Because they have they have that pull with the people. Because I started that early on. I was working with a promotional company um, out out here in New Jersey. And I was selling them. Yo, I'm telling you, like, anywhere from 50 to 250 tickets. And each ticket For sure, like definitely don't want you as a DJ. I want you as a promoter. No question. But I was that. doing that early on when I was, like, 15, 16. And the reason I was doing that is because they were putting me on big shows with, like, Little Pump, Ski Mask, like, all these big rappers. Yeah. So I was getting on all these shows, but I was getting annoyed because it was a competition between me and the other guys who were selling more tickets, right? I always sold more tickets. But they wanted to put the other guys on because they were older or a little bit better or whatever. See, see that that's where that's where I, I guess I that, that's that. where that that differentiates with me, right? So like I'm always gonna have a headliner, right? Mm-hmm. But if I see a guy like you who's selling me 250 tickets, bro, I'm talking uh, about 250 tickets times 25 dollars. We talking about money pay though for the fucking headliner. Money though, I'm telling you, money though, I'm telling Manito, you, yo, you're in my party every single time. Listen to me. What are you what, talking about? But once again, I think uh, it's about what it's, are you a, saying? <clears throat> it's about the communication, right? So on on a, on a situation like that, I'm. A, Let's say, like, for example, I book a headliner, yeah. but you're one of the guys who I put on, and you happen to sell me 250 tickets, right? The next conversation is, is like, yo, we're going to have another event. You know, like, can you, and this is the very important one, can you handle being a headliner? You sure I'm getting at? Mm-hmm. Because at, at some point, you need to almost, re, like, re, re, recom, recompensate? Recompensate? Like, like compensate, compensate. Compensate, yeah. for compensate. The fact that, yeah, you might not be the best, but if you could work towards it, we can make something work. Exactly, because listen to me. I, I'm going to be honest with you. You know what? Maybe I won't put you as a headliner, but I'll put you the guy before the headliner. You mm. know what I mean? Or maybe I'll put you to close. Mm-hmm. You sure I'm getting at? Because once again, but it's a lot that has to do a lot with egos. Like, you know what I mean? Like And that was the big thing. The egos were getting involved there, right? And then me and other DJs, like, we were fighting who wants to play Dreams and Nightmares and who wants to play these big songs and stuff like the that. The fact that you guys are having this conversation is crazy. First well, of I all, was, I love the fact that you guys have that conversation because I hate listening to the same Dembo well, a hundred times it in one night. Play the same thing over and fucking over. Fucking hate it that get shit. The same reaction. Nigga, you, know? you know how many big songs are in this fucking world? Yeah, but <clears throat> I also think that it's, like not, I, it's not it's not the song that you play, but how you play it. Ex- but you see where you see where I go with my got, criteria with DJs, bro. If somebody plays a song twice before you, right? Let's say there's don't three play DJs that in the shit room. again. What What do you mean before me? The opener? Yeah, like like. The and opener. you're the closer? No, I'm saying like you're right before headliner. Oh, okay. You, yeah. I mean, that's also a big debate that I have. Because you also got to realize that what happens sometimes before a big headliner, right? Is sometimes, especially when it's an artist, not just a DJ. Mm-hmm. Especially when it's an artist. It gets to the point that before that headliner, they don't give a fuck about the co-headliner. Technically, the DJ yeah, yeah. before him. You know why? Because they want to see the artist. They pay exactly. to see the artist. So what happens is the whole beginning, people expect it to just be a little bit of music, artist. 
mm-hmm. which is not like that, Never. you know, especially concerts. It's DJs, maybe opening artists, then maybe another, another DJ. DJ, then maybe one more artist, and then and, a DJ, then and the then artist, artists. and then it closed. Bang, that's how it is. So that's why it was a big issue of, you know, what songs are we going to play, how are we going to play it? You know, and I was getting a little, you know, offended at, because of that because it just it, it wasn't working out for me. I'm working my ass off. You telling me whoever sells the most tickets gets the best opportunity, and I'm working my ass off. And that's kind of why I kind of was like, you know what, this promoter thing really isn't for me. I completely turned the opposite way and never really sold it. Yeah, whoever was working with yeah, you was doing some grimy yeah, shit. Yeah, that, that's, that's not, that that's wouldn't work. That's some grimy shit, bro. Listen to me. You selling me 250 tickets, bro? Trust and believe, my nigga. What I'm, 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 I'm gonna make I'm gonna make you a headliner. Nigga, you're like the god of this shit. You I'm are the make- nigga that sold everything here. You is this nigga. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Just think about it, bro. Like you, you what? Listen to I me. know a lot of people. I'm gonna be honest. Just on my phone, I probably have like twelve thousand contacts. On my computer, I probably have another fifty thousand. I keep track of everything. I email market, like, bro, marketing help from school. Exactly. Don't get me wrong, and that's why I'm able to get all this. I work with a talent agency, so I've I have contacts all fifty states. I've I've booked other artists who's working with major companies, so I have all the contacts. I'm good to go, and that's why I don't really look at other people and try to compete. Because at the end of the day, look, I'm playing the long game. I'm trying to get my degree. I'm trying to get my finances up. I'm trying to get the taxes right. I'm trying to get employees uh, properly paid. I'm trying to get major loans mm. so I can increase the company tenfold, not just take small steps. I need to take bigger financial risks now, and that's why I stopped touring as much last semester because I was like, if I don't do this private event, then I can't double and triple my income. Mm. Yeah. I needed to double and triple my income because, yes, I could charge 1000 or 1500 now, but maybe people won't want to pay me two two point five or three, whatever. That's fine. Yeah. No problem. I don't care if I can't get that. Right? I'll take even a little less than what my average is, but then I'll do three more privates, four more privates, and now that's already coming to my pocket. So I don't gotta sit there and try to negotiate so much. I give you a price, you think it's fair, cool, we work that out, make it work, do the privates, make that work. Now I got you know more service income, yeah. I got service term contracts. And now if I have a client booked for six months, I don't have to sell again. I was taking up so much time trying to be a salesman. Mm-hmm. DJs are salesmen. They are trying to sell their services, yeah, and people don't understand that, right? Because what happens is they don't keep contact of their clients. Once you start using a CRM, like a client relationship management, yeah. yo, it, that's probably the biggest tip, the for biggest those who game. Don't, for those who don't know, what's a CRM? What's a CRM? Cust- yeah. Customer relationship management. Basically, is going to put all your clients. It's just a contact list where yeah. you're able to see how much you charged them last time they paid, uh, any invoices. It just... Bro, what businesses do? Like, I'm sorry to put it like that. A lot of people just don't operate as a DJ, as a business. This is exactly why Google, Apple, uh, Microsoft, all them niggas take your fucking info and sell it to somebody else because it's marketing. They make money off you. They make more research off you. Then they make more money off you. That's exactly (laughs) why when you you see when you have you ever noticed when you talk about some shit out of nowhere, boom, that ad comes up on your phone. Just think about that. Mm. No, so my question to you: Um, what CRM platform do you use? What CRM platform? Actually, I use my QuickBooks because it's a financial platform, and then okay. on my CRM, since I'm already sending the invoices on there, it keeps track of my uh, customers. Okay, mm. dope, and I'm dope, able dope, to have dope. unlimited customers on there, and then it also projects my numbers. It gives me estimates of how much money I'm going to be making, and it works out. It's very easy. Sends everything for me. It's automated. Something that I used to spend, I'd say, 15 hours a week doing. Now I spend an hour, maybe like. 10, 15 minutes every morning. And this is QuickBooks, correct? QuickBooks, yeah. Correct. $15 a month. Like, let's be honest. People spend way more on subscriptions. Like, you Bro, you spend, you, you, you spend more 50, when you go to McDonald's. You spend, <laughs> you spend 15 on Netflix or one TV, dog. Exactly. Yeah, so no, Think it, about it, that. it works out, honestly. That's, Think I mean, about that. That's why I care about business a lot because a lot of people will DJ and sell tickets and do this and do that. But it's about longevity. I, I know that I'm going to be in the industry for a while. I might have not tapped in everywhere where I want to just yet. But I come correct. You know, people see me on social media, all cool branding, it's everything like that. I get it, right? But at the end of the day, you sit down, you talk to me, you're like, oh, this guy's about his business, right? And I know what I'm talking about. I've done it for years. And I'm always open to learning, you know, just because I, I think it's one way doesn't mean it's right. I think that's also, the, like, the important part, right? Because I think... You know what I think is the, right? the, the, the The knowing, but also open to learning... Right, because yeah. I think it's like it's the it's the open mindset, right? The the learning mindset where yeah. a lot of people. I'm, I'm still young. I'm gonna learn shit from everybody every day. I, like I'm, yeah, I'm probably gonna find out that I'm wrong about a couple of things. It doesn't matter. One hundred percent working out for me right now. Then cool. I'm gonna keep rocking with it. And it's really just you know trial and error. You know what's trial and error? You the know ne- what's trial and error? Yeah, the next question. That two thousand trivia. That two thousand trivia. That is trial and error. We're making progress now. All right. <clears throat> Mm. Oh, now nah, he's he got the 90s. Nah, nah, nah. I don't know what the fuck now he'll, talking nah, he'll about. Now he'll get this one. Not get this one. <laughs> well, you yeah, might. You, you might this, not. If you get this I think one. you'll get it right, but you might not, though. What disease 
was declared a national emergency in 2009. Mm. What are the options? <laughs> yeah, homie. He's like, nigga. <laughs> yo, yo, my man looked at me like, he's like, wait, what? What are the options? All right. A, Ebola. Mm. B, swine flu. Mm. C, uh, um, measles, right? Yeah, that was too old now. D, bird flu. What was the year? 2009. Yo, hold on, hold on. Where your phone, where your phone at? Where your phone at? All right, all right, just in case. Have a seat. Have a seat. I don't bro. trust niggas seat. with a Michigan, That's definitely, it's with definitely a Michigan Ebola. sweater, bro. Nah, chill, chill. Derek Jeter went to Michigan. It's definitely, I'm not even going to take Fuck a lane. Derek That's Jeter. definitely Ebola. All right, so here we go once again. I can't be wrong. <laughs> what? Hey, I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what disease? Nigga said I can't be wrong. I just took a shotgun to him. I can't be wrong. <laughs> what, on, dis- what disease was declared a national emergency in 2009? A, Ebola. Mm. B, swine flu. C, measles. D, bird flu. It wasn't COVID. measles or bird flu. It was one of the first two. COVID. <laughs> it wasn't measles. It wasn't. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, yeah, yeah. You, it wasn't. It was not C or D. I know that for a fact. It wasn't what? C or D. C or D. Yeah, no. Okay. So then it's you A left. A or B. A or B. And what was mm-hmm. B? B swine is swine flu. A is Ebola. I don't, I don't know why. I just don't remember swine. When the hell was swine flu? I don't know. But you, if you want, you can use a lifeline. You want to use a lifeline? No, I really feel like it's Ebola. So is Ebola your, your answer? I hope so. Is is A Ebola your final answer? Yeah. All right. Pour the shots. It was B. It was B. Swine flu. <laughs> <laughs> you had a lifeline. He, they he knew a, it. They he knew had it. A fifty percent. They knew it. My they man it. had a fifty percent <laughs> chance, and guess what he did? Got it wrong. You should have just Nigga. been like, yo, yo. Does anybody <laughs> confirm here, A or B? And then you 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 got four lifelines. Dude. Yo, yeah, it was. Wait, I have four lifelines. You got, you got, you got four. You got four. You could use, you could use every single one of them once. Bruh, I'm been been telling telling you you that. That one shot got you like that, bro. Damn. Damn. What what was that thing that he drank? The thing with the box and the other big box. (laughs) The box in the box. (laughs) Otro salud, otro salud. Perate, perate, perate. Another salud. Just because I want him to get the other one right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, cheers, brother. No, it's nothing. I know I'm used to it. All right, so yo, you've worked with some big artists, right? Um, mm. um, talk to me a little about that. You know, and you know which artists were a really big difference maker in your career. Uh, the two biggest I would say um, that changed my career would probably be Juice World, right? He helped me out a ton, and Fat Boy SSE. Juice World because honestly, he already had a major platform when I was mm. able to start working with him. Um, and what and what capacity were you working with him? Um, I did some of. Uh, like I operated some of the shows with him because Pete, his manager at the time, uh, had this company called Pete House, and I did a G Herbo show for him, and I opened up, sold the tickets at that time, yeah. helped out, whatever, uh, brought some artists, and then I built a good relationship with him, and then he started working with uh, Juice World, and once he started working with Juice World, like the Pete House company started like. Like trailing back, like he really focused on Juice World's career because it was uplifting. So he was like, "Yo, I have my company on this, but I'm also managing Juice World. Can you help me get private security? Can you help me get the rider? Can you help me get um, the tech stuff like this? Like I have a show in Philadelphia. Can you help me get these stuff?" I was like, "Absolutely." I was like 17. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, "Absolutely." I know what the fuck I'm, I'm doing. doing. <laughs> <laughs> I was but like, I will get that shit done. Yeah. Fuck so like, it was a big opportunity, right? And all I had to do was make phone calls and set things up. So. I was like, you know what? I can make it happen. I made it happen, got the openers, which he was like, yeah, get the openers, make some money, do whatever you got to do, just situate it so we have a good show. Um, ended up doing all that, uh, helped him out with whatever I could. And uh, after that, I built a good relationship with Juice World. And then Pete was like, yo, I, I genuinely, you know, I like you, you work hard, um, you know, come around to a couple of the other shows. Then they had like a New York show, they had another Philly show, a Boston show, and then they announced their tour with Ski Mask and Juice World. Then I ended up going to a few other dates for them, and it pretty it worked out. You know, it was fun. I was able to, you know, DJ here and there. Uh, not every single one, obviously. He had his main DJ, uh, mm. Mike P. But uh, when they were busy, you know, I was around. So it was it was cool to experience that with them because that that magnitude told me. Was oh yeah, it gave you a lot of ex- a lot of big experience too. It's not yeah, like, very no. very big experience. Yeah. Don't get me don't get me wrong. I was worrying at that time about the wrong things, right? Mm-hmm. Like I was getting like passes from the teams, like yo, here's ten passes. Bring whatever girls you want. Let's yeah. have some fun. Like I was getting those perks early. Yeah, right? seventeen, and I was like, oh yo, this is what the life is like. You right? thought you thought you was the I man. Was, I was like, yo, bro, I could make a couple thousand slots, and I could go DJ. 
for this guy posts about it and my whole high school is talking about me and all this town is talking about me. Oh, I got all these passes. But I'm going to be honest with you. Off air, honestly, bro. I would have passes and I'd be like to girls, yo, you want to come? And I would literally hook up with girls and they would like, I would give them the pass backstage and I'm literally dogging like five, six, seven girls that, that week just because of the event. Just because you had the pass. Just because I had the passes. because The, promo- the promoter life. Damn, girl. <laughs> promoter life. The promoter, the promoter life. life. You was the down promoter. bad, girls. Yeah, but like. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, you was down bad. <laughs> <laughs> For tickets, bro. Damn. It wasn't just tickets. It was like backstage. Backstage like, passes. Yo, I'll, I'll yo but hold on, hold on. Let me let me put this. I let you happen with that. No, 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 no. Let me put this. Clear. You- yo, backstage is corny. Corny as fuck. Backstage is corny. Not when it's one artist and it's a major artist. I think backstage is corny. You're on the stage, huh? You're on the stage. To me, backstage is corny. What are you doing? So, all right. For example, when I was working with Juice World. Uh huh. They gave me passes for Rolling Loud. They gave me passes for Made in America. Okay, that's I a different backstage. Backstage, they <laughs> were in the trailers. They had, yeah. they have in the trailers. They have all their rider, food, liquor. A bunch of other celebrities are all in the back because you don't see the celebrities in GA. Um, I remember when I went to Made in America, it was literally right next to Meek Mill. All his people was able to meet a couple of them. Once again, I don't have business for him. He's headlining yeah. these shows. But it's cool to be around those circles because it's like, all right, I'm around these people at 17. No bullshit. I wasn't trying for my career. I was still doing my EMT. I was bullshitting at that age. Yeah. I was bullshitting and I made it that far. Yeah. Now I'm putting my foot to the, to the, to the, to ground. the, yeah, to the ground. But you see, that's tougher now. It's harder now for because, multiple reasons. Because of what you're trying to do. Not because... Because last time when you were in that situation, like you said, you were 17, you were just having fun, not paying no mind. No mind, no mind. But money, now no you're, mind you're trying to focus on, this is where I want to go. So I had to do all of this correct before I get here. So... Interesting that you say that. Well, fuck is speaking to me like a father figure right now. <laughs> I'm, just, hey, I'm, I'm just saying. So interesting enough, um, I want to be an international DJ. That's really my go-to goal. goal. So that's why I started the private event company because I don't expect other markets to pay me how they're going to pay me in the United States, right? Just the economies are different. I can't expect them to pay me premium unless I'm a huge major name. But until then, I'm going to still want to get into the clubs because I want to travel. I want to mm-hmm. be in these areas. So with that being said, I was working with Kevin, and I mentioned to you he wanted to take me to Australia, fucking Chile, Argentina, all these other places. And that's kind of where I was just like, buddy, I really like working with you, but it's just not aligning with my goals, right? Because at the end of the day, everything was cool. It was perfect. I had a good time. But at the same time, I didn't want to be a Latin DJ. Don't get me wrong. He speaks Spanish, yeah. and I know how to do it. You play me any genre, I'll make it happen. But I didn't want to do that. At the same time, I was falling in the same pigeonhole. Like, yo, I worked with Juice World, I worked with Fat Boy, I worked with all these major artists, and I was always never in the spotlight. I was always in the background. So it's like I love working with these guys, and as much as I love providing my service and helping them out, like, yo, I gotta make a stupid bag for me to be wanting to do that. Other mm. is is the spotlight that important for a brand? Yes, for I know what you're saying. If I could work, so for example, when I worked with Kevin, right. He was very like, yo, everything is KR, everything is King Records, everything is this, 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 this. I get it, dude. I'm working for you. I get that. But I need to get exposure. I need to get posted on your page. I need to get tagged. I need to get all those other stuff. At the end of the day, he operates his business how he wants, and I respect that. But Fat Boy, on uh, on the other hand, right, he posts videos with me. It goes on Worldstar. He tags me. This my homie. Book him. Cool. Oh, yo, if you need bookings, hit up Jersey John. I would get bookings for him and me. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it depends on, like, who you're working with because there's some people that, bro, they fucking boosted me like a motherfucker, like a brother to me. But then yeah. there's other people that I'm just doing service you're just, for. You're just a you're just, worker. You're just, you're just, yeah. So it's no, it's no problem. We still hang out like friends. We go out yeah, like yeah, friends. Yeah. But it, when it comes to business, it's I like I need more, bro, because part it of... needs to align with my goals, right? As much as I would have loved to do that, now that I'm older, I'm like, I could have done that, right? But at what cost? Mm. And it was, and, that, and that's why I say it's harder because now you're trying to enter that place from your own face. And here's, properly, here, here's yeah. properly. Here's, here's because a I was worrying about the wrong things back then, mm. and now I'm worrying about the analytics, the, the everything so exact that I promise you, I cannot. There's no losing for me until I fucking die or can't DJ. There is no losing for me because I'm doing it perfect. Mm. So now my 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 question to you is: Do you think that you? Didn't want to be a Latin DJ because of the way the market in the Latin world is set. No, I love it. I love the Latin market. It's way better, bro. People came up with tattoos. The vibes was different. The love you was think? there. Hell yeah. You think? I think the gente nosotros quiere muchísimo. Sí, pero 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 que hay más cuarto. Hay más hay más cuarto en el otro lado. 
Claro. There's more money on the other side. There's definitely more money on the other side. For a DJ, there's more money on the other side. No questions asked. In Latin market? No, 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 in the international market. I'm I'm talking to you like on the like, uh, ¿cómo que se llama el chino? El chino, um, fuck. What's his nigga name? The Asian nigga? The one that throws the cake to people's faces? Steve Aoki. Like the Steve Aoki side. Like that side, that money for DJs is a totally different way. Is that that where you want to get to? Yeah, I want to get into that, but you know why? It's not because of Latin. It's not because of any think, of that. I think it has to do a lot with that. No, it's because it's electronic music. There's, mm. there's no lyrics. But, but to my point, to my point, even even Latin electronic DJs are not making the money that. No, yeah, but, they're that, huge. But that becomes <laughs> to the to the point that Steve no, Aoki. Steve Aoki's, Steve Aoki's but, an anomaly. Nothing okay, but, biggest, but, but the okay, biggest, but yeah. to my point is okay. To check yes. to my point is give me a Latin one. Give me a name of a Latin one. You don't mention anyone. Yeah, I barely know Steve Aoki. Hugo, Hugo. 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 No, those those are the Hugo. 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 Was it Latin Hugo. With an L at the end. But this is the thing: if you don't know the scene, it's you over. You're not gonna know. You're not gonna know. Listen but you to go me. to different countries, you Nigga. gotta understand, people go crazy for it because that's their, like, primary choice of genre. Yeah, yeah. Not here. Like, I went to Mexico, and when I was with Kevin, I saw the whole reggaeton scene. But, yo, I saw the Latin tech house scene, Latin scene, like, the DJ scene. It's fucking huge, bro. They have an EDC in Mexico. They have all oh, yeah, the major they do, they do, they do. shows in Mexico. Bro, their scene is massive. All I'm saying is, like, it's what he was saying before. It's a branding thing. You know Steve Raioki because he became his, his brand. This nigga, like, the, a lot of people play the same type of music he plays, yeah. but this is the dude. This is the man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's different. And and to your point, that's uh, that's why I said, oh, that's where you want to get to. And I asked you that because I want to know, I wanted to know if it's like, oh, I want to build my company's brand or I want to build me. I want to build my company's brand to be able to fund my other goals, mm. right? my personal brand. Because the uh, because the company's called JJ Entertainment, which is Jersey John. Yeah. Same thing. I just wanted to separate it because I feel like my brand is too ignorant to sell weddings, to sell parties, to sell any of those things. So I did the JJ Entertainment so I could staff and put my people on because, in all honesty, I can't just pay everybody out of my own you know brand, Jersey John. I can, but then that's not going to leave me with enough money. And at the end of the day, if I don't have enough money, I can't invest in the group. I can't invest in bigger things and bigger opportunities. So I made the other company to generate more money there for me to not really touch that money to be able to give it to the rest of the group and build the company while I keep making my money with my public bookings. Mm. That's really the way that I was thinking of it. I don't need the extra money. I live really happily. Everything's good. Everything's uh, college paid off for. Everything's paid off for. I don't I don't waste money, dude. So I feel you. I feel you. It really just comes down to making sure that the people around me are making bread so I can hyper-focus on building that strong. Okay, uh, another question. When it, be- when it comes to... When you become a little bit bigger, right? When it comes to being your DJ, when you see a DJ, most of the time they do a show and it's just like, oh, I'm DJing. There's not really a show. Like you said, an entertainer. Oh, I'm scratching. I talk a little bit on the mic. What What are your plans to make your show a bigger show? I like this question a lot. Um, interesting enough, I'm learning about right now DMXing, so it's lighting. So I'm yeah. learning the lighting. I just got a mobile rig, which I'm able to have the DMX controller, and I'm able to change the lighting. So that helps me for mobile, and that also helps me for public gigs because not every single club or bar has a full-blown uh, system. So what happens is I could bring these things. So, I'm, yeah, I'm funding my private event company, but guess what? I could use that for my public events. Mm-hmm. So that enhances my price. That enhances my experience. That enhances my show. I just got a CO2 cannon. Let's be honest. It cost me like 30 bucks. I could upcharge 150 whatever it is. And look, off. CO2 cannon, they're happy. Now I just tax on to my public booking, mm. right? So it's all those little extra things that I could add to my booking, which is going to make me money. And then it adds to my show and people are going to be like, yo, holy shit, that was different. No, it's because I have access to those things. You give a mediocre uh, DJ all these enhancements and lights and stuff like that, they look great. That's why headliners, guess what? They get all the lights, they get all the sparklers, they get all the stuff. Why? Because they want to make them look great. They want to make their money. It, I've seen headliners that are dog shit. But what happens is they make them look good. They brand them right. So that's what comes down to the shows. It's really the selling and the experience. And that's why I told cool. you I focus very hard on sales and I focus very hard on experience. Nice, 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 nice. nice. I think it's time. It's time. Yeah. Uh-oh. We might <coughs> we, just use we a did, We did. This, this, this is the last life. Well, th- so, this is, so this is what happens with this question, right? So if you get this wrong, podcast over. Simple as that, right? Uh-oh. If you get this right, we speed round. You running. get this right, and then we go start doing speed rounds, right? We'll give you like two or three questions back to back to back to back. We're fucked. And then we keep on going, right? But I believe in you. 
I believe in you. This is 2010. This is when you grew up, my buddy. Like you, like listen. To this me. is your time. This is your time. This I'm is saying? your time to this shine. This is what you do. This is your I time to shine. I believe in you. I believe in the strength Why of your brain. This, this is what you do. Why yo, we yo, start fellas, this fellas, way? fellas, fellas, right here. Don't burn your hand, bro. Fellas, right here. Oh, right here. Oh, ah, uh, you improvised. I like the improvisation. I thought you had it in your hand. All right, put them. Right. You could drop them right. Drop them right there. Oh, drop them right there. Bam. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, all right, so this is your time. Remember, you still got four lifelines that you have not used. I don't know why, but you haven't used them, right? I should have used them all. So, um, uh, you're bugging out. Oh, we're fucked. Goodbye, guys. This is an interesting one because I I don't know if I would get this right, but hey, let's see. Maybe you maybe you get this right. What company opened the first cashierless store in 2018? Oh my God! A Amazon, B Walmart, C Target, D Kmart. Fuck! It's Walmart, guys. Y'all motherfuckers don't know either. You ha- you have a lifeline. They looking at you crazy. I think no I, cashier. You know, you know what you should do? You know what you should do? Whoever's looking at you crazy, you should pick them so that they pick the answer. At least we don't blame you. We'll blame them. But it's definitely Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's who, definitely Walmart. Are you using? Why a li- not? Are you He's asking? Time out! Time out! Time out! No! 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 Skirt! Skirt! <laughs> are you using a lifeline? Am I? No! 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 We're not asking them. We're asking you. Are you using a lifeline? Are you confident? I'm confident. Walmart. All okay, right. so so, so no fuck lifeline. The, fuck the lifeline. So then. no lifeline. No lifeline. Walmart. And you're gonna go with B. Walmart as your final answer. <laughs> he knows it's wrong. No, I don't. I'm just asking you. <laughs> you're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> we take two shots if it's wrong. <laughs> and then we call it at that. All right. So B is B Walmart your final answer? Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, serve the motherfucking shots and it's not. Oh okay, so here's but, but, listen, time, 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 time. but I'm gonna gamble this. I'm gonna gamble this because I, I see everybody was looking at you crazy, right? So let's do this, right? What is we, it? Hold on, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Kmart. So, security, what, what what answer are you going with? Amazon. You also Where the Amazon? fuck does Amazon have a store from? You're going, you're going with Amazon? Where have you guys showed up to Amazon? Amazon, Amazon. Amazon, Amazon. Yeah. Amazon, you're done already. What are you going with? Yeah, Amazon. Amazon, what are you going with? Y'all just making it. What are you going? Target. 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 You're taking a shot. The answer was Amazon. How? That, that was obvious. Amazon no, it wasn't. Was you said <laughs> cashierless <laughs> store. Cashierless store in 2018. Well, motherfucker, I thought you meant like self-checkout. Well, that's your problem. I said cashierless store. What are you talking about? <laughs> I would have been right. Yo, Jersey, um, <laughs> where where can people find you? Um, what do you got coming up next? Um, what's your Instagram? What's your handles? All that all that jazz stuff. Yo, my people, my Instagram is at Jersey John. Honestly, just follow me on social Say media that again. right there. Start all over. Start over because security, uh, security was security blocking blocked uh, your face. My people... Now we just dropping shit. But you saw what we did today. We got drunk. We have fun. And my Instagram is at Jersey John. Hit me up. Pull up to a show. Tickets on me. Let's have a good fucking time. I got a lot of shows coming up. So just catch me. Peace. Yeah. You could be filmed. Yeah. 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 Ye